Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I've got my Titanium Grey Galaxy S24 Ultra with me here, and also my S23 Ultra to add a little bit of context for this first review, if you will. And by now, you've probably watched a bunch of hands-on videos, you know the specs and the deal, but what's it actually been like to use? Is it much of an upgrade? Is the camera better? Are the AI features actually useful, or are they just gimmicks? And ultimately, should you buy one? Well, let's start with a little bit of a blind test. Can you tell me which is the new one? between the S23 Ultra and the S24 Ultra. It's tough. On the right, yes, is the new S24 Ultra, but certainly they are very similar looking. The new phone is a tiny bit wider, but also a little bit thinner. We also now have a flat rather than slightly curved screen, which I must admit I do prefer, although Samsung say it's so that you can run your finger or the S Pen right to the edge of the frame and it not sort of fall off the cliff. We also have this matte titanium armor frame as opposed to the glossy armor aluminium from before, which is a little bit tougher and more durable. Plus we also get the latest Gorilla Glass armor, which again is tougher and more scratch resistant and apparently more anti-reflective, but I'll put that to the test in a second. And you can also just about see they've reduced that lower bezel. So we do actually have a fully symmetrical bezel right around the edge, which is quite nice. And that chin is a little bit thinner but we're still getting that gorgeous 6.78 inch Quad HD AMOLED display. IP68 water resistant, stereo speakers, the S Pen of course, which functionally is the same, although they have slightly reduced the overall size of it this year. And of course we have that new five times zoom lens replacing the old 10 times, but we'll dive into that in a second. So I've taken them both outside with me. It's like the first sunny day we've had in the UK in months. And if you can forgive the pretty scratched up S23 Ultra, hopefully that's not gonna be the case with the new guy. You can see this new screen is a good deal more anti-reflective. It's less of a mirror. And paired with the higher brightness, we're talking about 1750 nits peak outdoor on the S23 versus 2600 on the new model, although apparently up to 3000 with their vision booster. But you can certainly see the brighter screen and that better anti-reflectivity does make it a better screen, particularly to use outside. Although, credit to my friend Supersaf who pointed this out to me, but you can see the S23 Ultra is actually a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more saturated. These screens are set up identically, Quad HD, maximum brightness, vivid mode, but you can see the S24 is just a little bit more muted, although you may actually prefer that. Now, because I'm a massive nerd, one of the first things I wanted to do was run a couple of benchmarks to see how much faster this new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy is versus the 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. We're looking at a 35% jump in the peak performance, although by the end of the test, we're only looking at about a 13.5% uptick, and you can actually see the stability is lower, and that's despite having an almost double the size vapor chamber cooler. It also has a higher peak temperature, it hits 43 versus 40, and it did use 2% more battery than the S23 Ultra. In Geekbench 6, the single core performance is about 10% higher, but an impressive 30% in multi-core. And look at that, in the Geekbench OpenCL GPU test, the S24 Ultra is 61% faster. And firing up a bit of War Thunder, maxed out 120 FPS mode with ray tracing cranked up, you can see we're getting a good 20 FPS more on the new S24. Are you gonna notice this in everyday life outside of high-end gaming? Well, probably not, although the new chip with its much faster MPU will speed up some of the AI features. Okay, let's play with the new camera. So, uh, you'll probably guess where I am. I figured the old clock face might be a good uh, demo for the zoom lens. Although first, I'm actually recording this with the selfie camera, 4K60 on both, at arm's length. And looking at the screens, can't see a turn difference, if I'm honest. Let me know if you can see or hear much difference. They haven't really talked about any changes with the selfie beyond the pro visual engine that's now sort of uh, using more AI to upgrade the camera throughout across all the lenses, but if I sort of get the sun on me there, spin around, have everyone look at me, like why is this guy holding two phones in front of him? <laughs> oh, there you go. It's chiming. Yeah, so that's the selfie, but let's switch around, play with the zooms and see if the camera is actually much better. Okay, so here we are, central London, beautiful but very cold day, and we've got the same 0 06 times ultra wide, same 200 megapixel main, same 10 megapixel three times optical, but this is where things change. Now we've got the five times optical on the new guy versus the 10 times on the S23, which is quite a controversial change, but let's have a look at what they've taken and see how they compare. And in good light, there isn't an awful lot between them. The main thing that strikes me though is actually the color, the white balance. You can see that the clock face of the Elizabeth Tower, Big Ben of course is the bell, this is the Elizabeth Tower, is white, as opposed to that bluish tint it has on the old phone. 
And stepping up to five times, we do get a slightly crisper image on the S24 Ultra, although it's not pushing it much beyond that three times optical on the S23. But this is where it gets interesting, 10 times zoom. We've got the native optical telephoto on the S23, and then we've got this sort of hybrid cropped in zoom of the five times on the S24 Ultra. Although at 30 times, there isn't a lot between them. Again, the color is the main difference. And actually, even if we go into the space zoom 100 times, they're still kind of oil painting-y. But certainly the differences seem to be less significant the further we zoom in. Let me show you a couple of other examples. And one theme, one pattern I am seeing is the S24 seems to handle dynamic range and colors a bit better. You can see here the S23 is a little bit blown out, it's a bit overexposed. And zooming into 10 times, there is a marked difference here in the detail, the quality. I mean, just look at this chap's face and his fantastic helmet. You can see a little bit more fine detail on his jacket on the older phone, but that just seems to be because the shadows have been raised too much. And it's not a naturally pleasing image. And you can also see with this lady's blonde hair that the highlights are a little bit blown out on the S23. It handles that dynamic range better on the S24. And again here, the new S24 is just doing a better job at pulling those shadows down, retaining detail, and not looking as washed out, and certainly not bringing in that blue tint that seems to keep cropping up. So it's not always vastly different, but I would say the S24 is a noticeable upgrade in terms of the camera. However, I'm not entirely convinced I like the quote-unquote upgrade here. Certainly the S23 is quite soft, it looks a little bit like an oil painting, but the S24 just looks like they've put it into Lightroom and dragged sharpness and clarity way up. Don't know if I love that, but certainly it is more detailed. All right, so let's switch to video, and I'm recording the audio now on the phones internally, and I'll switch between them so you can just get an idea of how it deals with the London busy traffic and school kids around me. So this is shooting at 4K30 on both. We've got Westminster Cathedral over there and uh, David Lloyd George hanging out, saying I should go that way, probably. So let's do a little zoom test again, going between 0.6, the one, the three, and then the five on the new guy, 10 on the old one, and then match the 10. So this is a 4K 30. I'm still reasonably stable. And then punching back out. And then back in. You get the idea, back in, back out. So now I've switched to 4K 60 and it should obviously be a lot smoother, nothing new there. We've got old Winnie Churchill just hanging out. But one thing that is immediately different is that I can use all the different lenses while recording on the S24, so I can go to the 3, the 5, the 10, the ultra wide. I can't switch any lenses once I start recording at 4K60 on the S23. So, as someone who does shoot a lot of 4K60, because it allows you to, you know, make it slow motion in the edit if you're half the speed, I kind of like the smoother frame rate, you have a lot more versatility now with the new phone. So, regardless of image quality, that's just a functional, nice little upgrade. As for low light video, well, this is being shot at 4K 30 on both. I can't see much difference. I've watched this clip back like 10 times and maybe there's a little bit less noise and compression on the S24, but I mean, these are side by side and I just can't see much difference. So I guess I would have liked to see a, a bit more of a marked difference uh, in low light video. What is new though, is the ability to shoot 4K 120. It is limited only to the pro video mode, so of course then you can play around with the white balance and shutter speed and all that good stuff. Stabilization definitely takes a hit at this resolution, but it does give you more options if you are a keen videographer. And I think it's the first time we have seen it on a smartphone. Now, one thing I really hope they'd improved is the shutter lag. And I have good news, S23 on the left, S24 on the right, and it does seem to be quite a bit faster. What's interesting though, is if we go to intelligent optimization, by default it's set to maximum, it's the amount of processing it does for the camera, but if we turn it to minimum, you can see it does speed it up on both phones, but still faster on the S24. But if we put it back to maximum, which it is by default and how you'd probably want to use it, it is a good deal faster now. And if I play the same clip again at half speed, you can really see the difference. And so now, versus the iPhone 15 Pro Max, they're a lot closer. I still think the iPhones are a touch faster, but I am very pleased to report that Samsung has improved the shutter speed with the S24 Ultra. Okay, it's too bloody cold to be out here. I've taken a lot of photos, but I want to try out some of the camera AI features. Let's head back home for that.
Okay, so let's open up the gallery and I want to show you a couple of the new AI photo editing features. So for example, here we've got a nice photo, but in the background we have this lady and that bag just lying there. So if we go to edit and then tap this new magical AI button, we can now draw around or highlight objects and then move, resize or simply delete them. And then if we press generate, after about 15 seconds or so, it'll fill in the image and you have a nice clean photo. You would never have known a lady in a bag were there. Let's try another one. So if I draw around the Elizabeth Tower, uh, you can see it actually highlights it immediately. I can then change the size of it, move it around, or simply erase it. And as if by magic, it's completely gone, and now I'm pointing at the sky like an idiot. You can even straighten your image. So if you're a little bit wonky like I am, well, my, this photo is at least, you can rotate to either straighten it or, I don't know, make it even more wonky. And then as it says on the screen, it will fill in the missing pieces. Let me try one more. Again, my picture's a little bit skew whiff there, so let's try and straighten it up. Quite a bit of background for it to fill in there. Press generate, let it do its magic and all its reticulating splines and all that. That's a pretty convincing edit. You wouldn't know. But my absolute favorite new AI feature, and the first thing I show my friends when they ask about this phone, is instant slow-mo. This uses AI to interpolate or create new frames. So even if you shoot a 30 frames per second video, just tap on the screen, and in a second, it'll turn it into slow motion. It is pretty magical. And then you can open up the video in the editor and change the speed and the duration, and then save a new clip. Although it's worth mentioning a 30 FPS video can either be slowed to half or one quarter speed, but a 60 FPS video can go down to one eighth speed. And in the edit, you can have multiple slow motion segments, so you can do a little bit of speed ramping almost. This is also fun to play around with. If you open up the wallpaper menu from the home screen and then go to creative, you've got this new generative AI option. Other Android phones also offer this, but I do quite like the implementation on the S24 Ultra because rather than writing in a full prompt, you just fill in a few different options like a surreal castle made of chiffon in shades of pink and purple, or perhaps a painting of a lake and spaceships in a Baroque style. Perhaps let's give it a few seconds to work its magic, and that's pretty cool. I think I might actually use that as my home screen wallpaper. What do you think? Samsung's also very proud that they are the first to implement the new circle to search from Google. Long press on the home button, or if you're using gestures in this case, just the bottom of the screen like that. You'll get this fancy animation and then just draw around anything you want to search. Let's see what happens if I draw around myself. Okay, all right. Let's try again from my Instagram profile. See if it picks up anything. Oh, it's picked up clicks. Clearly I'm not important enough. This phone is rubbish, don't buy it. I'm also really pleased to see Samsung now offering seven full OS updates, seven years of Android, which is way beyond everyone else. So hopefully they all start to catch up because this is the kind of support we want. The only downside is it's very expensive. We're talking £1,249 or $1,299, and that gets you 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, so what do you think so far? Are you impressed by the new S24 Ultra? Have you pre-ordered one? Are you going to get one for yourself or not convinced? Let me know what you make of this in the comments. But so far, I'm having a really good time with this. I really like the brighter, more anti-reflective screen. The performance is obviously quite a bit better, although you don't really get to notice it that much. But certainly with the AI features, I do find myself using it quite a bit. However, Samsung has said that these AI features will also be coming to the S23 series later in the year, in the first half of 2024. So if you already have an S23, then it's one less reason to upgrade. But if you are on an S22 or anything older, then I reckon this could be worth the upgrade. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed my first review, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.